Thinko Lamalcha, by KSO Media and Documentation Cell, Issue Number 53, Friday, 3, November, 2023. Headlines Thousands join peaceful rally against gross human rights violation on Kukizo people. Meite illegal insurgents from Myanmar seeking refuge in more and pursuing separation from India, Ko Tiu to UHM Amit Shah. Meite commandos terrorize denizens of Tengnupal DST, says Kuki NP Tengnupal, submits memo to Amit Shah. Core condemns abuse of human rights in more, knocks PMO's door for immediate withdrawal of Meite police commandos from more H. Manipur forces resorted to arson, looting in the name of combing operations in more, 10 Kuki MLAs. UNC urges union minister to reject project proposals. Attack on Pramit Singh, high drama for securing government security cover? Will not forget Manipur, Catholic Church in Kerala's Thrissur hits back at BJP's Suresh Gopi. Mainland Indians too not safe from radical Meite armed groups. Observation of sixth month of Meite atrocities on Kuki. Thinko La Malcha, Relief Center Update. Munkot Chapu Relief Center. Moniklat Chapu Village. Ukral Subdivision, Ukral District. Managed by Kuki Students Organization Ukral District. Total inmates registered, 119. Male, 60. Female, 59. Kuki victims update as on October 16, 2023. Deaths, 146. Villages burnt, 200 plus. Houses burnt, 7,000 plus. Churches and synagogues burnt, 360. Displaced persons, 41,425. Thousands join peaceful rally against gross human rights violation on Kukizo people. Thousands of young and old Kukizo people from different walks of life on Friday took to the streets for a mass peaceful rally in Churachanpur district against the gross human rights violations on the Kukizo people. The rally, initiated and organized by the Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights, CORE, with support from other civil society organizations and student organizations, began from Laysang village ground and concluded at Peace Ground Tobong, near the site of Wall of Remembrance. Opposite mini-secretariat, the participants of the peaceful rally, mostly dressed in black attires to show their disappointment, were seen holding placards such as Silence is Consent, Speak Out for the Rights of Kukizo People, Valley for Meite, Hills for Tribals, Neutrality Favors the Oppression, Peace is Far-Fetched Without Justice, Manipur State Government born in 1972, died on May 3, 2023, Inaction Breeds Indifference, Act Now, Meite Lies vs. Kukizo Blood, Separation from Rapists. Separation from murderers, separation from looters and arsonists, please separate us from animals, where is the law, where is justice, our homes were burnt, ransacked and looted while the state government watched, separation is the only way for reconciliation. After concluding the rally, the participants gathered at peace ground wherein leaders of different tribe organizations, civil voluntary organizations addressed the mammoth gathering, addressing the gathering, the president of Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights. Ngainikam rejected the claims made by the Métis that the ongoing crisis in the state was an outcome of separate administration demanded by the Kukizo people, questioning the state government and the Meite populace whether the innocent Kukizo, killed in early May in Impol, were demanding for separate administration. Gainikim said the Kukizo were compelled to demand separate administration only after the Meite began ethnic cleansing of the Kukizo. The Métis have forced and chased the Kukizo people from Impol and warned us not return to Impol. As such, the Kukizo have started the demand for separate administration, Gainikim said. The Corps president spoke pertaining to the death of a Meite police officer and Kuki police officer and mentioned how the CM convened an emergency meeting and announced an ex-gratia for the deceased officer. However, the chief minister has not uttered a word in the case of a Kukizo sub-inspector of Manipur police, Ankamang, who died in the line of duty and nothing has been announced or done till date, she said adding that if justice can be delivered for the two Meite teenage lovers, why not for those Kukizo who died in Impal? Ngainikim also said that all such actions and unequal treatment showed that the Meite and Kukizo have already separated. She then appealed to the people to avoid child labor and requested the people to approach CORE and consult if they faced any hardships. She further announced that the Kukizo women may even go to the extent of launching fast unto death if the Meite commandos are not removed from more. The General Secretary of Kuki NP Manipur, Kaikaho Gungate, in his speech said, the ongoing crisis is an issue of survival for the Kukizo and we will fight till the last drop of our blood, claiming that buffer zones within a country has existed only in the present Manipur crisis. Kaikaho Gungate said the creation of buffer zones also showed the Kukizo and Meite are already separated. Kim General Secretary urged the people to work unitedly and support decisions taken by the Kuki Apex body. He assured the people that Kim as an apex body will not work against the interest and welfare of its people. The General Secretary of Kuki Students Organization, General Headquarters, Seaboy Tout Hang, said the Métis have already declared war upon the Kukizo, but the Kukizo have not made any such declaration till date. Even though the Métis have began ethnic cleansing against the Kukizo, the latter have been able to survive only because of unity among themselves. Seaboy Tout Hang, 
while mentioning the immense importance of Kukizo women's role in the ongoing conflict, also appealed to the Kuki mothers to encourage their children who are old enough to be prepared as volunteers and uphold them in prayer, stating that Kukizo since the past had been fighting for their rights and that the same has happened in the present crisis, Sibwe Tauthang also encouraged the Kukizo people to fight with truth, but not on lies like some communities, the Kukizo people are done away with the word lies soon after they moved out of Impul Valley, he said. Seaboy Tauthang further said that the Kukizo people did not start the ongoing war, but they were forced and compelled to respond to attacks. He also expressed confidence that the Kukizo will emerge victorious in any attacks against them. Several other dignitaries from different civil society organizations such as ZSF, ITLF, ZO United, HSA, Mar Inpui, PTC, etc., spoke on the ongoing violence perpetrated by the Maytays and urged the people to unitedly fight till the demand for separate administration is realized. Meitei illegal insurgents from Myanmar seeking refuge in more and pursuing separation from India, Kotiu to UHM Amit Shah. The Committee on Tribal Unity, or Kotiu, Sutter Hills King Pakbi District apprised the Union Home Minister through a representation submitted through Deputy Commissioner King Pakbi on more issue on the second day of its total shutdown today. The Kotiu Sutter Hills King Pakbi and KSO General Headquarters have imposed a 48-hour total shutdown from midnight of November 1 in protest against the alleged forceful occupation of border town more in Tengnupal district by the Maytays, the Kukizo people from King Pakbi led by the leaders of Kotiu marched towards the DC King Pakbi office from National Highway 2 and submitted the representation to the DC King Pakbi to be forwarded to the Union Home Minister, speaking to the media. Kotiu's General Secretary, Laman Lun Singsit said that the forceful occupation of Moor is the ill design of Manipur Chief Minister N. Baron Singh to provide a safe haven to Meitei insurgents from Myanmar who are facing the being of the Democratic Alliance Army. He said that these outlawed Meitei illegal insurgents from Myanmar who are part of the anti democratic alliance seeking refuge in Moor are pursuing separation from India and they should not be welcome in Moor at any cost. He also said that the barbaric activities of the Meitei forces currently in Moor, such as demolishing houses, looting church money, and burning vehicles, are condemnable and the culprits should be immediately prosecuted. Therefore, immediate withdrawal of Meitei insurgents disguised as state. Forces and the state Meitei police officers is the need of the hour and the central forces should be the sole authority of tackling law and order in Kukizo areas, he asserted. He further said that until our demands are given the attention it deserves, the Kukizo populace will stand tooth and nail to fight the state terrorism in any form deemed fit for our survival. The Committee on Tribal Unity in its representation to the Union Home Minister Amit Shah stated that the forceful occupation of more by Meitei insurgents disguised as state forces have triggered another wave of violence in Manipur and urged the Union Home Minister to take necessary immediate humanitarian action. It stated that the repeated arms and ammunition looted at the state armory in Manipur clearly indicated the support of the political class. The latest of such seizure on November 1 at the armory in 1st Manipur Rifles came after the clarion call of Sanajaba Lizemba, the Raj Yasava MP, in one of his social media post, which read, Be prepared my dear children. Point three CRPF personnel sustained bullet injuries in the attack and several assault rifles and rounds of ammunition were confiscated by the Meitei insurgents. The insurgents also looted arms and ammunition from the escort personnel of IGP Zone I and from the security guards of Manipur Central Jail, Old Lambulane, Impal. It stated, Such countless events of handing over the state arms and ammunition to Meitei insurgents have occurred since the start of the ethnic cleansing. The looted cases are stage-managed as it is supported by the evidence of CBI unable to probe the infamous MPTC arms loot case, it stated. It also stated that the Mira Pibus are used to conceal the loopholes among the bureaucracy and the political class, the committee in its representation further stated to the Union Home Minister that in connection with the arms and ammunition loot cases, it is pertinent to conduct a special investigation by an SIT monitored by the courts. The committee reminded the Union Home Minister that the assurance he had given on his visit to Moore on May 31 to remove all Meitei state forces by replacing them with neutral forces of the center is yet to materialize. It then apprised the Union Home Minister that to avoid another wave of Meitei insurgents' aggression in Moore and in other parts of Kukizo dominated area, the security advisor and the governor should play a vital role as an intermediary to see that the assurance is fulfilled. Reminding the Union Home Minister of his verbal affirmation that the valley should be under the watch of N. Baron Singh and the hills under his watch, the committee apprised the Union Home Minister that the prolonged presence of Meitei forces in Kukizo areas is an intimidation to spoil the existing tranquility. It also stated that as the ongoing conflict is a communal conflict supported by the state, most of the state machineries are compromised and the need for implementing impartial policies such as installing immediate helipad at King Pakbi is very crucial and the airway should connect Churachanpur and more for relieving the burdens of emergency travelers. Meitei commandos terrorize denizens of Tengnupal DST, says Kuki Inpi Tengnupal, submits memo to Amit Shah.
The Kuki Inpi Tengnupal district vehemently condemned the beastly nature and atrocities of the Manipur police commando upon the innocent citizens of Moorhill town in the aftermath of an unfortunate incident where Chingtham Anand Kumar, MPS, SDPO Moore, was killed by unknown miscreants on November 3 1.INA statement issued on Friday. The Kuki apex body of the district stated that the Manipur police have gone wild and rampaged on the Kukizo villages of Sinam, Chikim, Gavajang, New Likat, Tinnamunjang, Kanan Vang, Facham Vang etc. all within Tengnupal district, in the name of combing operation, the Manipur commandos accompanied by Aram by Tangle thieves powered by Manipur Chief Minister N. Biran Singh were on looting spree in Moor Town and surrounding. The Manipur police commandos beat, tortured and harassed the public irrespective of gender or age. They also act to the extent of snatching the valuable ornaments from the hand, neck and ear of the victims, KIT said, the cruel actions of the Meite police and Arambai hooligans forced the Kukizo tribals of Moor flee to safety towards the Indian army camps, thereby proving that the Meite police have come to carry out genocidal mission on the Kukizo tribals and not for maintaining of law and order at all, it alleged, adding that the chief minister N. Biran Singh's ultimate intention to Seize the Kukizo territory was, therefore, openly proven to all Indians, seeing the whole developments unfolding and more, the Kuki Inpi Tengnupal has questioned the Home Minister Amit Shah as to where the promise to withdraw the Manipur state forces from more has gone now. The Kuki Inpi Tengnupal also submitted a memorandum to the Union Home Minister Amit Shah on the atrocities committed BT Manipur Meite police commandos and their Aram by Tengal hooligans at Sinem and more Border Hill Town on 1 ST of November. 2023.In the memorandum, the Kuki body said ruthless atrocities were committed by Manipuri police commando suspected to be in collusion with Meite militias around by Tengal, Meite Lipun who dressed themselves in Manipur police combat uniforms, had ruined and terrorized the villages and towns of Kukizo tribals in Tengnupal district.It stated that Sinem village was captured by the lawless Manipuri police accompanied by around by Tengal thieves who started damaging properties, looted cash, precious ornaments and property documents, burning houses and vehicles belonging to the villagers. Fortunately, the Assam rifles rushed to the village and stopped the Manipur state forces from burning down the whole village and also evacuated the villagers to safety. Later, on November 1, 2023, the Manipuri police accompanied by Meite militias began their atrocities upon the people of Moor Town in the name of combing operation where they have physically assaulted women, aged and minors. They also looted all valuable properties including gold chains, cash worth crores from the residents of the town. Important documents viz. Adhar cards, property documents, educational certificates etc. were being torn and burnt down. This Manipur state-sponsored militants also abducted innocent citizens of the town without any proof of crime. Women, children and old-aged had no option left but to move out from their houses and seek protection of the Assam rifles, KIT stated, the Kuki NP reiterated its demand for separate administration to free its people from such breach of law. For equal political rights and survival of the Kukizo people of Tengnupal district.IT also demanded the Union Home Ministry's intervention for the withdrawal of all Manipur state forces including police commando from Tengnupal district particularly in Moor Hill Town for lasting peace and harmony and speedy progress of the Act East policy, and to replace them with Kukizo police personnel and officers until the demand for separate administration is fulfilled by the Union government. Corps condemns abuse of human rights in Moor, knocks PMO's door for immediate withdrawal of Meite police commandos from Moor H. The Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights, CORE, has condemned in the strongest terms the indiscriminate use of force by the state police commandos in the ongoing search and combing operations in more in the aftermath of the death of a Meite police officer. In the process, innocent Kukizo civilians have been ruthlessly beaten up by the police commandos while several women were frisked, assaulted and molested in which three women got head injuries due to pummeling with walkie-talkie slash wireless sets, who were later admitted to hospital. In a statement issued on Friday, Kaur said the reprehensible acts of stealing money from church donation boxes, robbing money from the women, vandalization slash burning down of houses and household properties and ransacking of many valuable items including vehicles, gold and jewelries clearly evidence that Manipur is no better than Hunter regime. Such despicable acts of vandalism, theft and robbery in the guise of combing operation is highly condemnable by all rational individuals in a democratic society like ours, said Kaur, the human rights organization also said following police commandos' excesses and brutalities, innocent Kukizo civilians of more including the sick and the aged, women and children fled to the nearby jungles while others are taking refuge at 5AR camps spread across more town, enduring the ordeal without food, medicines and drinking water the whole night. The continued presence and deploying of additional state forces and more escalates the already volatile situation, it stated, while it is outlandish on the part of the powers that be to entrust enemy police personnel as law enforcers given their direct involvement in the ongoing state-sponsored genocidal pogrom against the Kuki Zo people. The Corps demanded the government of India to immediately and unconditionally withdraw all the state forces from more and book the police personnel for their inhumane and unlawful acts in the interest of peace and security in the state.
The Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights, CORE, also submitted a memorandum to the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, calling his attention to the unwarranted deployment of Meitei police commandos who are working together with the secessionist valley-based insurgent groups based in Myanmar, the radicalized Meitei Arambai Tangle dressed in Manipur police uniform at Moor, thereby resulting in gross violation of human rights and unprecedented threatening the safety and security of the People of Moor.Core urged the PMO that the Meitei police commandos must be replaced by other Kukizo state forces to rebuild the trust and confidence of the general public in the government, citing there are enough efficient Kukizo IPS officers and personnel to do the job. The memorandum also mentioned the injudicious discrimination between Sub-Inspector Ankamang Haukeep and Subdivisional Police Officer Anand Kumar. This is the height of Manipur state government's indiscretion and outright discrimination, Core said, the human rights organization also pointed out the partial and biased approach of the National Investigation Agency and the Central Bureau of Investigation in the arbitrary arrest and detention of various Kukizo individuals while no legitimate action is taken against the beheading of David Thiek, the burning of a seven-year-old Tunzing Hengxing, his mother and aunt in an ambulance, and the rape, murder and mutilation of the Kukizo people. In view of the tyrannical misgovernance under the leadership of chauvinistic N. Biran Singh at this emergent wartime situation, the Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights strongly implored PM Narendra Modi to immediately recall all the state forces from more thereby deploying competent and high-ranking Kukizo police officers to be assisted by the Central Security Forces in maintaining law and order in the border town, the sincerity and seriousness of the central government in ushering peaceful and conducive atmosphere for devising lasting political solution to the Kukizo people shall be revealed and tested in its dealing of the current crisis and more, it said, stating that the protection of human rights, the rule of law and the safety of affected communities should be paramount in addressing this issue. Core cautioned that if any untoward incidents of violence occurred upon the Kukizo people, the government shall be held responsible. Manipur forces resorted to arson, looting in the name of combing operations and more, 10 Kuki MLAs. The ten Kuki MLAs condemned the unprofessional conduct and inhumane excesses of the Manipur police particularly the commandos against many innocent and helpless Kukizomi Mar civilians in Tengnupal district, especially in Moor during ongoing operations in the aftermath of the unfortunate incident at Moor on October 31, 2023 in which C.H. Anand Kumar, MPS, SDPO Moor died. A statement issued by the 10 MLAs on Thursday said while the loss of life of the officer in the line of duty is condoled, the elected representatives highlighted the continuing excesses and atrocities perpetrated by the state forces against their people in Moor and other places in Tengnupal district based on ground reports. On November 1, 2023, Sinem Kuki village in Tengnupal district was attacked and houses and properties slash vehicles destroyed by the Manipur police commandos. In the operation that is underway at Moor, the state forces resorted to arson, indiscriminate firing, looting of civilian properties, vehicles, household items, including valuable ornaments slash documents slash gold slash cash and unprovoked brutality forcing common people, including women and children to flee into the nearby jungle. Several women have been mercilessly assaulted slash molested by the commandos and admitted in the local hospital. While we understand that the state police may be hard-pressed to nab the culprit, s. responsible, we cannot condone the unrestrained illegal and barbaric activities of the commando and state police personnel, the MLA said, adding that the lack of faith that the people have in the state forces stemmed from the innumerable instances of their direct involvement in attacking Kukizomi Mar villages during the current conflict. The MLAs have been voicing the serious concern and apprehension their people have against deployment of Manipur police commandos at various forums, including the center government and requesting for the non-deployment in the Kukizomi Mar-dominated districts of Manipur. In spite of this, more and more strength of the commandos have been dispatched to more resulting in fresh disturbances and violence. Appealing the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government, of India to intervene into the matter at once and ensure withdrawal of all the commandos deployed in Moor and other Kukizomimar tribal areas and replace them with neutral central forces, the 10 MLAs demanded that all airing state police-slash-commando personnel should be booked as per law. UNC urges Union Minister to reject project proposals. The United Naga Council, UNC, has written to Arjun Munda, who is Union Minister of Tribal Affairs, on October 31, 2023, requesting him to ignore the project proposals submitted to the Ministry of Tribal Affairs vd.0.11 slash vckvib slash 04 slash 2023, Impol, May 12, 2023, and do no 2 slash 6 slash 2023 cm Impol, October 23, 2023. In the letter, which was made available to New My News Network, the UNC said, as cited in the subject, the undersigned on behalf of the tribal populace begged to bring the following few facts for favor of your kind consideration and sympathetic action that the tribals living in the state of Manipur have come to learn that the vice chairman of the Manipur Kadi and Village Industries Board, Lampel, Impul had recently submitted six project proposals to the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Government of 
India for consideration of the same exclusively for the Valley-based NGOs based in Impal East and Impal West in the guise that Valley-based NGOs are relentlessly working for the tribals in the far-flung areas of Manipur. The UNC letter to the Union Minister also said the Office of the Manipur Khadi and Village Industries Board has its own ministry and hence submitting proposals to Tribal Affairs Ministry without mentioning the targeted beneficiaries and locations areas for implementation is ultra vires and a ploy to siphon off the fund allocated for the tribals of Manipur. The letter further said the Tribal Affairs and Hills Manipur being the nodal department and in charge of tribal programs and activities, plan formulation and documentation, work proposals etc. for that matter ought to be within the purview of the Tribal Affairs and Hills Department and not any other agency. The Naga body also said the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Government of India, has identified priority districts for the state of Manipur viz. Tamanglong with 95.72% of ST population, Ukral with 94.35%, Chirachanpur with 92.94%, Chandel with 88, 97% and Sinapati with 87.49% and therefore, allocation of funds under proviso to Article 275, 1, of the Constitution of India is solely for the purpose of promoting the welfare of scheduled tribes in the state or raising the level of administration of scheduled areas therein to that of the administration of the areas of the state with limited allocation of fund. As such, breaking up slash splitting the allocated funds meant for the tribals to valley-based NGOs will certainly destabilize the tribal affairs in its execution of work programs and yield negative impact while addressing the need of plugging critical gaps, the UNC letter added. In the light of the above reasons, your good self is requested kindly to ignore the project proposals in the larger interest of the tribals of Manipur, the UNC further added. Attack on Pramit Singh, high drama for securing government security cover? Six bullets were reported to have hit the vehicle carrying Pramit Singh, the chief of a radicalized communal group Meitei Li Pun at Langal in Impal. Pramit was booked in July for allegedly promoting enmity between groups and criminal conspiracy amidst the ethnic violence in the state. Pramit and his associates issued a statement through a video clip where he gave a brief overview of his Meitei Li Pun as an organization and expressed his displeasure over the armed attack on his life, which he says is an attack on the Meitei Li Pun and to the Meitei community as a whole. This kind of attack has caused fear and grim to the women and children of the family, although it does not scare me, Pramit said. He also warned the miscreants of extreme actions if such acts are repeated in the future, any attack on anyone's life is highly condemnable in the strongest term. The alleged attack on Pramit however seems to be an attack on his vehicle rather. All six bullets seem to have conveniently been shot to a point where there usually is no passenger, all while the vehicle was at its minimal speed, interestingly, it turns out that the vehicle used by the Meitei Li Pun chief belongs to the director of horticulture, government of Manipur. One wonders as to why an official vehicle could be used by a non-official person in the midst of high tension between two communities who are at civil war, Pramit, in his rise to prominence has never stayed afar from lies. The man enjoys the limelight and attention he received from the public. He has repeatedly made threats, derogatory remarks, openly called for radicalized youths to carry out inhumane acts against the minority Kuki community using his social media platforms like Meta's Facebook and also on his various interviews with national media channels. The past few months, however, have seen him becoming the background actor. Recently, a court in Manipur had issued a non bailable arrest warrant against him, with further actions from the concerned police station still awaited. Considering the manner of attack on his vehicle, it leaves to one's imagination if this attack was a staged act to enable the Meitei Li Pun chief to once again be in the limelight amidst the current situation in Manipur or to avail official, governmental security services from the state authorities citing such reasons as attack on his life etc. It will not be surprising if in the future such order or statement from the government authority for security cover of Pramit Singh is issued. Will not forget Manipur, Catholic Church in Kerala's Thrissur hits back at BJP's Suresh Gopi. The Catholic Church in Kerala's Thrissur, where the BJP plans to fill actor-turned-politician Suresh Gopi in the next LS elections, has blasted the party saying the church would not forget Manipur. In the November edition of its mouthpiece Catholica Sava, the Catholic Archdiocese of Thrissur said there was an attempt to cover up the Manipur riots as elections approach. It said the party looking to retain power at the center was behind the move. During the recent riots in Manipur, several Christian churches were attacked in the state. The Catholic Bishop's Council had raised its concern over the continuing violence in Manipur. Quoting former BJP Rajya Sava member Suresh Gopi's recent comment, Don't look to Manipur and Uttar Pradesh, there are strong men in those states to look after, the lead article in the publication said, people are asking whether, Gopi, has the guts to ask the Prime Minister or the BJP central leadership what these strong men were doing when Manipur was burning. We will repeat Manipur, you vote for us here, in Kerala, also. If we get power, we would convert Kerala into another Manipur, is it the aim, people have started asking, said the article in the diocese mouthpiece. The government's ineptness in Manipur turned out to be a license for rioters. No democratically thinking person can forget it. People are aware of the bid to solicit votes, hiding the Manipur violence. 
Suresh Gopi's statement was deplorable and immature. Voters in Kerala have the prudence to recognize religious extremists irrespective of the guise it is under. Supporting religious extremism would only lead to disaster, it said. The LS seat at Thrissur is one of the few constituencies in Kerala where BJP has planned to put up a strong fight. In the 2019 LS elections, Gopi had contested as a BJP candidate, but lost to Congress leader T. N. Prathapan. Gopi came in third. He has openly stated his intention to fight the next LS elections from Thrissur and has been concentrating on the issue in the constituency, where the BJP hopes to cobble together the Hindu and Christian vote banks. BJP state leadership has also indicated that Gopi will contest from Thrissur. Mainland Indians too not safe from radical Mete armed groups. A social media post on Facebook, of a Mete combatant armed with sophisticated weapon, was widely circulated today. What is interesting is the caption, addressing parents from Mete community, he posted, Ngakti Ekan Esh Emma Singda Kut the Kiba Fubikiba Mayan, G, Macha Singdo Layman Singlumbe Nacha Nabung Naupa Ikoina Koichin Chalaga Lyrebane Mayung Macha Singdo, which roughly translates to your sons and brothers have today avenged the high-handed acts of Mayung Macha, mainland Indians, on our mothers, sisters and women, they have been chased around. It must be noted here that Mayung Macha is a derogatory, with a pinch of racial profiling, term used by Maytes for mainland Indians and non manipuri Hindus settling within the state. In the present case, it is used to mean the Central Security Forces personnel deputed in the Impul Valley during the ongoing conflict. Mention may be made that the Central Security Forces posted in the Impul Valley have had a hard time controlling unruly mobs of radical youths and womenfolk who have time and again had multiple standoffs and confrontations with the forces when and wherever it suits their communal motives. In their quest to control such mob, there have been instances of security personnel resorting to differing tactics of mob dispersal lati charge, mob bombs, tear gas shells, etc. The recent standoff between radicalized Mete combatants and the central forces in Impul can thus be seen, amongst other reasons, as a revenge for the alleged atrocities of central forces personnel, dutiful personnel, are profiled and derogatory terms used against them for carrying out their lawful duties by secessionist and radicalized youths of Manipur. Playing the Hindu card for the neutral Indians while also racial profiling of mainland Hindus is oxymoronic. This is just one of many instances wherein there is utter disregard for the job well done by central forces in quelling mob at various locations within the 700 square km of Manipur, the Arambai Tengal and Meitei Lipun combatants have grown in confidence with the unconditional backing of CM and Biran, insurgent groups, and their titular King Sanajeba who is also a Rajya Sava MP. They have taken control of the law and order situation in Impul Valley. They can be seen flaunting their looted weapons, patrolling the streets, often in a standoff with opposing forces, manhandling and handing out correctional acts and sentences to any and every individual or group that exposes them, thereby promoting themselves to be the real rulers of the Kuki's Death Valley. The central and state authorities, despite ample evidences, photos, videos, voice records etc., of proofs, are powerless or are rather the backing force behind such radicalized groups. No legal action whatsoever has been taken up against such groups and their acts. Where is Manipur heading? How does one then expect the Kukizo community to reunite with the state when even the central forces, mostly Hindus from mainland India, are not safe, with threats of mortal retribution looming over their heads in carrying out their defined, lawful duties in the valley? The only way forward is total separation of administration for Kukizo from the 700 square miles of mighty land, Manipur, for everlasting peace in the northeastern region. Observation of sixth month of Meite atrocities on Kuki. Sit in protest at Jantar Mantar. New Delhi jointly organized by Joint Unau Delhi Tribal Students Forum, Delhi, Kukizo Women's Forum, Delhi, and Unau Tribal Women's Forum, Delhi. The Committee on Tribal Unity, or COTU, Sutter Hills King Pakbi District apprised the Union Home Minister through a representation submitted through Deputy Commissioner King Pakbi on more issue on the second day of its total shutdown today. Thousands of young and old Kukizo people from different walks of life on Friday took to the streets for a mass peaceful rally in Churachanpur district against the gross human rights violations on the Kukizo people. The rally was initiated and organized by the Kuki Women Organization for Human Rights, CORE, with support from other civil society organizations.